Hi YouTubers, I'm El Gracian from elbowpepper.com and this video is part one documenting an experiment that I've been carrying out. I actually set this up four and a half weeks ago from today's date. So when I started that, that was May 27th. And after four and a half weeks, I'm going to be showing you the progress. But first, let me tell you what I'm actually comparing. I have three different pepper plants that are growing here. The first one is a control. The second one utilizes a liquid feed as a supplemental feed. And this is an all-purpose general feed that you'll find from miracle Grow. So it's got not only the macronutrients, but it also has a nice offering of some micronutrients, which can really help out. And the analysis of this is a 24-8-16 mix. So that's what's in this. Now I'm comparing it to something from Kelp for Less. That's a vendor, kelpforless.com, and they actually have their own custom grow packs and bloom packs, as they refer to them. So this experiment is using both of those. And on this one pepper plant over here, I've started out for four feedings. I've been using grow pack A and grow pack B, which come together when you order the grow pack from their site. And what you do is you mix this, you mix this in water, in solution, mix those together, and then you use it as a root drench for the plant. So this grow pack is high in nitrogen. It's a great source for vegging out your plant, getting good leaf growth and plant development early on. Now, of course, these are pepper plants, and I don't just want a bunch of leaves. I want some fruit. So at a certain point, you're going to want to switch from using a grow pack to a bloom pack. And that's what I just for the first time used this past Wednesday. I uh, switched to using the bloom pack. And they recommend using their calcium magnesium plus as well. So in addition to getting the bloom pack, I'm also using the calcium magnesium plus. The bloom pack is designed to have less nitrogen, but more phosphorus and potassium and things that favor blooming, fruiting, nice fruit setting, nice fruit development. So let me show you in particular what I did to first set up these containers. That way you can see what we're growing in. I'm about to fill up the third of my SIP buckets for this experiment, but before doing so, I thought it would help if I kind of show you what I'm working with. These are prototype designs here. The bucket that's on the bottom just has a single overflow hole that is set to be below the bottom of the bucket that goes into it. And that's all that you have to do for this first bucket. Now this is the bucket that goes inside and most of the times what you're going to see is a wicking basket of some sort, but I'm actually trying out some cord because I just want to see how it works and because I also want to be able to accommodate a larger water reservoir, it seems like a lot of the designs just show a bucket sitting right down into an equally sized bucket. And that really doesn't give you a lot of room for water. I want the second bucket that is containing the mix to be elevated a little bit higher so I have more gap at the bottom to fit more water. And so a cord can hang down further more easily and still be able to wick up water. And to be able to get this bucket raised at a higher level, what I have is these one inch thick, around four inch long, maybe four and a half inch long blocks that I literally screwed into this bucket so that it holds it higher up. Now, clearly if you had a larger capacity bucket for the bottom one, the one that has the reservoir, then you wouldn't have to do anything like this. Maybe you could have a five gallon bucket sitting inside of a seven, eight, maybe up to a 10 gallon bucket and get the same effect without having to go through this step. But these are the buckets that I had and so that's how I did it. To just give you an idea, looking here at the bottom of this bucket, I have some aeration holes that I drilled. I have the holes for the cord and then I also have one other hole which is for the fill tube so I'm going to show you how this all fits in.
here's my fill tube. Just put that right in. And this is the setup I'm using for all three of these. They're all set up the exact same way. To fill up these buckets, what I did was took another bucket of the same size, put in two quarts of vermiculite and two quarts of perlite, and then topped, them, topped off the bucket the rest of the way with this miracle Grow moisture control potting mix adding vermiculite and perlite in order to try to adapt it to more of an SIP potting mix, giving you better pore spacing and aeration within the mix itself. So I'm hoping that that works. They'll all be set up the same way, same containers, same potting mix. The reservoirs are filled and I'm getting ready to plant these peppers. I just wanna show each of them. I have my control. This one will be watered with the miracle Grow liquid fertilizer. This one will use the Kelp for Less Grow Packs and CalMag Plus. These are all the same variety of pepper. They're not genetic clones, but they're similar in size. Uh, they've been grown in the same potting mix, which is actually just the straight up Miracle Grow seed starting mix. And they had a single feeding of the synthetic miracle Grow liquid fertilizer just to help them along, but they haven't been inoculated with any type of microorganisms, beneficial bacteria, mycorrhizae, or anything like that yet. So I think it's a pretty level playing field here, and it's time to put them in. Here's the miracle Grow all-purpose plant food, 24816. I looked at the instructions and then I also looked online where there were additional instructions that I was able to use to determine the application or the feeding rate. I'm using a slightly rounded quarter teaspoon of these crystals dissolved in a quart of water and I'm applying this every week, one time a week, every week. So using that as the basis for my feeding program, I'm now looking at the kelp for less and I'm kind of mimicking a similar application rate and frequency so that I can have a fair comparison, a fair test. And let me show you how I've been using these. I've used four applications of the grow pack. Now online, the grow pack, it says is 10 for 10. That's not really super strong. It's definitely not as strong as the miracle Grow stuff. I'm not sure though if that 10 for 10 refers only to pack B in the grow pack or if it also refers to this as well. As far as I can tell, this is similar if not identical to the calcium magnesium plus, but they've just simply bundled it and sent it as part A, part B. But what you want to do to use this is dissolve this in water separate, dissolve this in water, and then you can mix them together. They don't want the calcium that's in here to be reacting with the phosphorus that's in here ahead of time. So they keep it separated and we keep it separated all through preparing the solution until we're ready to do the root trench. So for the amount that I'm using for these, I'm using a quarter of a teaspoon of B, a quarter of a teaspoon of A, dissolving each of those in half a quart of water, giving me a total volume of one quart, which I can combine then and use as a root trench. And for the control, just for the record, I am watering that as well at the same time, but the control is just only being watered with tap water. Well, I've actually already at this point in this experiment, in this test, finished using the grow pack. So now I'm moving on to the bloom packs. And the bloom pack, when you order it, all that it comes with is this. And they tell you that it works best using the calcium magnesium plus also, but you have to buy that separate whenever you go with a bloom pack. So I have both of these products and I'm using the same application rate but uh, to show the difference in the way the bloom pack is formulated, it actually is two 
2020. So you've got a lot of phosphorus and potassium in that. And the CalMag Plus has an analysis of 800. So what I'm doing with this is in a pint of water, I'm using a quarter of a teaspoon, dissolving that, watering the plant separate, and then immediately afterwards I'm coming in using a quarter of a teaspoon and a pint of water, doing the bloom pack, dissolving that, watering that on the plant, and that's how I'm going to continue to uh, water this plant all through the rest of the growing season, and I'm going to see how much that helps with growing bigger fruit, maybe more fruit. There are a lot of claims that they make about this product, which makes me hopeful, but I'm just going to actually have to see what we get. Before I wrap up this video, I just want you to see the way these three pepper plants look now that we've had several weeks for them to be able to grow. And I can definitely see that the control, which had no supplementation, it's growing okay, but it's definitely behind and not doing as well as either of these. Now, the Miracle Grow crystals are definitely giving this plant a boost, and they're worth using, that's for sure. Um, they're not, this plant isn't quite as tall as this one, but it is very bushy, and it is doing a good job setting fruit. Now, this one here is just a few inches taller, and I'm happy with the growth I'm seeing here, too, but it's not quite as dense. Like, in here, there's some elongating of some of these nodes, where this is more of a dense growth. And, you know, it's hard to say what's behind that, but uh, definitely either of these systems are an improvement over the control. We're just gonna have to see once the fruit starts coming in, the quality of the fruit. I'm in particular uh, interested in seeing if we get some blossom end rot on any of these, and, and maybe, on, maybe on some of them we don't get that. That would be really nice to see maybe if this one is able to not have that because of the extra calcium and magnesium that we're pumping into this. So maybe that may help. But uh, that's how the experiment is looking so far after already having a few weeks. And I wanted to share that with you. It's going to be months before I do a follow-up and actually show the final results. But in the meantime, this gives us something to be able to look forward to. And as I do future walkthroughs, you'll know what's going on when you see these blue buckets setting here in my yard. Well, guys, that's all we have for today. But uh, I look forward to sharing part two with you in the future. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. And then you'll be able to see which of these outperforms which uh, whenever those results are in. I'll be keeping you updated on other things in the garden too, so I look forward to sharing some of that. It's been interesting with all this rain. Uh, the sub-irrigated containers have actually been doing okay though, so something's working right. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and happy gardening.